special for you today. Um, about a week ago, I attended a uh, Bicker Tonight baptism. Their official name of their church is the Church of Jesus Christ. They're based in Monongahela, Pennsylvania. And uh, I found out they had the first Utah baptism. And so it was fun. Steve Pineacre was out here in Utah, and uh, we got to attend. And, uh, you know, especially since I had David Boyce on recently, I'm not going to take over his 52 churches in 52 weeks, but I thought it would be fun just to kind of do a little, you know, one one church in, in, the, in this weekend. <laughs> and and uh, just tell you my uh, experiences at attending a... Uh, Church of Jesus Christ baptism here in Utah, um, the first thing that you'll notice was it was very cold. I can't remember if it was 30 or 32 degrees. Um, apparently, the Bicker Tonight's believe that just like Jesus, you should be baptized in an open body of water. <laughs> and so, even if it's December, they've joked about cutting holes in the ice to baptize somebody in the winter. Um, personally, if it was me, I would probably wait till summer because <laughs> <laughs> that's very cold. But the baptism occurred in the Jordan River. And so I thought I would show you a clip here of the first baptism in Utah uh, for the Bicker Tonight Church, the Church of Jesus Christ, uh, here in the Jordan River. And uh, here we go. Jacob Reed Betts, having authority given me of Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So the guy who got baptized, his name is Reed Betts, and uh, I've got a picture of him here. And uh, so I just can't believe I, I, uh, I'm, I'm not that brave. I'm not a, a polar bear at all. But uh, yeah, it was really cool in the Jordan River. Obviously, that would have a little bit of s significance because Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. Um, but of course, this is <laughs> Jordan River, Utah, Jordan River, Israel are not exactly the same, but uh, it was very, very cold. Um, so we did that. Uh, I think Reed lives in the Murray area or something because after the baptism, we got in our cars and we rode to the, uh, library, one of the libraries there in Salt Lake city in Murray and, uh, and did the confirmation service. So, um, one of the things that I find interesting about the church of Jesus Christ, the Bicker tonight church is they have amazing music, and I guess this is the second time I've attended. I didn't really talk about the first time, but I'll I'll, I'll kind of share some thoughts there. First time I attended was in Florida with Steve Pineacre also, and um, the, I swear they have the best piano players because their music. I think I might even have a little clip here. I hope. <laughs> Anyway, so that kind of gives you a little bit of taste of the music, and um, it is just really fun, really, really cool. Um, and so we sang songs for a long time while Reed was getting warm and drying off. <laughs> and uh, anyway, then he showed up. Um, if you've ever been to an LDS baptism or confirmation service, in a lot of ways, it's very, very similar. Um, and so... Uh, 
you know, they give the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Ghost and that sort of a thing. Um, one of the interesting things about uh, a Bicker Tonight service is the fact that uh, in every service that I've attended, and uh, so at this baptism, for example, after, I believe it was after the, the confirmation, they made an announcement, and they do this in sacrament meeting as well, or at least I call it sacrament meeting. I'm not sure what they call it, but um, they will make an announcement and say, would anybody like to receive a blessing? Um, and so, oh, and I should also mention before I go there, um, another difference with the Baker Tonight's as opposed to, say, the Community of Christ and the LDS Church, Community of Christ, LDS Church, we both baptize at the age of eight, whereas with the Baker Tonight uh, Church, they let the person decide, and they usually don't let anybody be baptized until they're at least 14, 15, 16, you know, 20 years old is, is probably more common. And so, um, so they want to make sure that the person makes that commitment themselves, and uh, so they don't, they don't baptize at the age of eight like, like the Community of Christ and the LDS Church do. So that was also interesting. I remember when I attended in, in Florida— a member of the Bicker Tonight Church was talking to me, and she says, oh, I attended an LDS baptism, and I was surprised you baptized people so young. (laughs) So, you know, it's through these little interactions that you start to say, oh, there's a little difference there um, that that I wasn't aware of. Anyway, after the confirmation, um, they had a, uh, they, they made a call and said, would anybody like to receive a blessing? And so, what, about five people probably stood up, and uh, so... The service was conducted by five evangelists. We would, in the LDS church, we would call them 70s. Um, so they're in charge of missionary work. And I know the guy who baptized Reed was from San Diego. <laughs> you know, I know there's cold water in San Diego, but December in Utah, it's got to be colder than the ocean in <laughs> San Diego. But anyway, they, they, they said that they kind of sunk down in the mud a little bit and it was hard to get out. Um, there on the Jordan River. But uh, he was from San Diego. There was a guy from Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and I think there was a guy from Virginia as well. And uh, so it's interesting because Reed was the first Utah baptism. I'm not sure if that's ever, but they were advertising it. So it might have been the first one ever. Uh, Apparently, they haven't had a big missionary presence here in Utah. I know they have a congregation in uh, Phoenix Mesa area, somewhere down around there. Oh, and of course, I guess I should also mention their most famous member or former member, I should say, is the rock star Alice Cooper. Um, <laughs> Alice's real name is uh, Vincent Fernier, um, and his grandfather was the president of the Church of Jesus Christ. So I don't know if they call him a prophet, but like a prophet, so. So Alice actually grew up, believe it or not, with the Book of Mormon. <laughs> and so um, I would encourage you, I've talked about this a couple times with John Hamer and with uh, Daniel Stone. Uh, he's definitely the most famous bicker tonight, um, but he actually, uh, he's really no longer a member of the church. I think he attends a Pentecostal church in, in Phoenix now or Arizona somewhere. So anyway... Um, so, you know, people can come up with all sorts of maladies. Uh, you know, I've got a cold. Uh, somebody had a headache. I remember a woman had just lost a baby. And so it was, you know, kind of a blessing of comfort. Um, and so and maybe I didn't pay as close of attention as I should have. I know in the LDS church, um, we do uh, anointing with oil and then a blessing. And... I couldn't tell. There were some times where it sounded like they were saying something. I mean, basically in the LDS church, one person would anoint with oil and then, uh, you know, we would do a very short prayer that says, you know, we're anointing you with oil for the blessing of healing and the sick and that sort of a thing. And then, then there would be a second blessing, whereas, you know, we would, they would just, just the standard blessing. And it kind of seemed like, those were combined because they definitely had their oil out and they put it on. A couple times I thought I heard a few little words, but they were kind of quiet. And then it sounded like just a standard blessing. Um, so I wasn't sure if there were two two prayers there or one, but it was usually the same person who did both. Um, so maybe somebody from that church can clarify that for me. There was a couple times where I was like, oh, are they saying, are they saying the anointing part first and then the blessing? I'm not sure. So anyway, um, 
So that was very cool. They, they do that at every service. Um, and so then, you know, we sang a lot of songs. One of the interesting things about the Bicker Tonight services is they don't have a program. Um, and so um, anybody can speak, I guess. And I mean, I mean, it was kind of led by the evangelists of the 70s. And uh, so they were kind of in charge. But, uh, but they don't have a, a written program. They, they direct the things by the Spirit. Um, I have heard that they, they do speak in tongues in the Becker Tonight Church. And I've yet to see that. I'm, I'm bummed. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that didn't happen while I was there. Um, Steve's seen it happen, I guess, in Florida. It's happened a few times. But uh, anyway, so uh, after the, uh, at the end of the confirmation service, it was kind of interesting. There were probably about 50 people there, I would say. Um, apparently, there was a husband and wife from Idaho Falls that were there. So there's a, they've got two people, or maybe it's a family, I'm not sure, up in Idaho Falls. And then there's another member here in Salt Lake that was previously a member, apparently. Um, and uh, so now they've got, I guess, two members <laughs> here in Salt Lake. So uh, so anyway, after the at the end of the, um, the confirmation meeting on Saturday, um, we all got in a big circle, all 50 of us or whatever, a little prayer circle, and, uh, and we're led in prayer. And so, so that was kind of interesting. You definitely don't see that in uh, uh, LDS church services. So uh, then Sunday, they had a service. I guess they had three. So there were five 70s here. Um, three of them went to Idaho uh, Falls for those to, to lead a service in Idaho, and then two of them stayed here. And they led a Sunday school. It was at the Marriott Hotel um, in Murray and uh, just in one of the conference rooms there. And uh, it was very similar to the service I saw in uh, Florida. And basically they had Sunday school for about 45 minutes. Um, a very typical lesson, title of the Bible and the Book of Mormon. Uh, interesting thing is they do not accept the Doctrine and Covenants as Scripture. Um so we didn't hear anything out of DNC there, but uh, but definitely a lot of Bible, Book of Mormon verses that many LDS would be very familiar with. Um, so uh, and then there was a little fifteen minute break, and then they had um, a, a sermon. Um, uh, Alfonso, I'm trying to remember what his last name was. He gave the 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 sermon there, and then um, and then pretty much every week they have basically what LDS would call uh, testimony meeting. And so, you know, anybody can get up and, and, and basically bear their testimony and, and talk about God and how God's been in their life and that sort of a thing. And then at the end of that meeting, once again, they ask if there's anyone who would like to receive a blessing. And you don't have to be a member of their church to do that. Um, and so, once again, five or so people, I would say, got up and, and, they, and they did the blessing again. So, so it was a lot of fun. Um, I still want to see speaking in tongues one of these times. <laughs> now that they've got a, two members here in Utah and two in Idaho, they said they're going to try to come out here once a quarter or something. I Because I, I, I did say, well, I didn't know about the other member. And I was like, how do you have a congregation of one? Is that Zoom? <laughs> and I think it's going to be primarily. But they're going to try to get out here to Utah. And so so that'll be cool. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And uh, so, you know, I feel... I like I've got a lot more bigger tonight friends. I've got a lot of community of Christ friends. Um, of course, lots of LDS friends, and uh, so just wanted to share kind of my thoughts there, and uh, and you know show some pictures of of these cool I would say Mormon cousins, <laughs> Restoration cousins. Maybe they don't call themselves Mormons, um, but uh, so it was super fun. You know, I'm thinking about doing a little thing like this, maybe not necessarily about, well, maybe about churches, um, but uh, maybe, you know, visiting places like Mountain Meadows and, and, and different church history sites. If that's something that would be interesting to you, please let me know in the comments and uh, maybe we'll, we'll make this a, a feature once in a while um, just to break up some of the interviews. And uh, uh, so let me know. So thanks again for listening, and uh, tomorrow or the next day we will have uh, George Potter to talk about the Book of Mormon.
If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, subscribe on either Patreon or at GospelTangents.com. For just $5 a month, you can hear the entire audio uninterrupted. On our $10 tier, if you'd like to see the whole video, you can see that uh, either on YouTube.com slash GospelTangents, or I've got a special Facebook group devoted for uh, full videos. So subscribe at GospelTangents.com and uh, sign up for just $10 a month. For $20 a month, if you'd like to get some bonus content, uh, maybe some of the stuff that ended up on the cutting room floor, you can sign up for that. And then if you'd like to talk to me for $100 a month, we'll, we'll do a monthly phone call on something like Zoom, and you can ask me anything you want. So thanks again. Also, don't forget about the merch, mugs, T-shirts, um, hats, things like that. I'm trying to get the ties up there. Hopefully I can get up, up there. And uh, thanks again for watching Gospel Tangents. And click here for some more videos.